are back. We're going to talk about the aromatic compounds right now and the infrared spectroscopy associated with them. So we're going to start with the simplest case, which is the benzene ring. Uh, two things that you're going to notice when you look at the infrared spectrum of benzene is the fact that it's actually rather simple. There's very few peaks present. Specifically, we have peaks slightly above 3000 as you should have because you have CH bonds bound to um, technically unsaturated carbons. But you also have a peak that's appearing about the 1500 region, you know, somewhere in the 1400s, really. Um, that represents actually the carbon carbon double bonds. And if you look at substitu substituted benzenes like uh, toluene, okay, so here you have methyl benzene, aka toluene. Uh, you still have those CH peaks above 3000 because you do have CH bonds on unsaturated carbons. But now you start seeing carbonyl peaks that appear at 1600, which is more representative of a carbon carbon double bond based on the formula up here. Uh, but you still see those peaks at about 14, 1500, which are pretty sharp and not exactly traditional of bending modes. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the, this is orthosilene or 1,2 dimethyl benzene. Uh, same idea, you still have some CH bonds on the unsaturated carbon, so you have peaks above 3000, but you also have these peaks at 1600 and the 14, 1500 region. Move to metasilene or 1,3 dimethyl benzene. Once more, you have peaks about 3000, you do have peaks about 1600 and your 14, 1500 region. Parasilene or 1,4 dimethyl benzene, you have peaks above 3000 and you have peaks between 16 and 1400, which are characteristics of the carbon carbon double bonds. So the thing that I wanna explain right now is uh, why and what is it about the benzene ring that yields carbon-carbon double bond peaks below 1600? Because based on the formula here that we talked about in the first video, we, uh, we expect to see peaks at about 1600. So why are we seeing some at 1400 as well, which are sharp? All right, so as I pointed out before, all the values for the CH bonds on the unsaturated carbons fall above 3000 as expected. But we're going to try to explain what's going on with these 14, 1500 peaks. All right, so thinking about the benzene ring, one thing that you can uh, notice, and I want you to pay attention to the position. So here you have on the left side, single bond. On the right side, on top of the molecule, you have the double bond. But via resonance, you can move the double bond over to this carbon. This double bond will have to move over here, and then this double bond will have to move over there to give you the second version of the benzene ring and technically the two of them are fine it doesn't really matter how you draw it they both represent benzene but notice that now on the left side you have double bond on the right side you have single bond on the top portion of the molecule and so what you're seeing right here is via this resonance this internal resonance that's happening is that half the time the bond here on the left is a single bond and the other half of the time it is a double bond so in reality you have more like a 1.5 uh, multiplicity in all of the bonds right here. And this is actually what we call resonance. And this is what makes compounds like benzene aromatic. Uh, the double bonds are not isolated and behaving independent of each other. They're actually as a group together via this resonance effect, giving you the aromaticity of the compound, which ultimately makes these type of compounds react completely different than alkenes themselves. All right, so if we go with this premise that the carbon-carbon bonds throughout the benzene ring are more like one and a half uh, bonds as opposed to double bonds themselves, then we can look at the formula and do some calculations. Now, the K value, you may remember, is 5 times 10 to the 5 if it's single bonds, and it's 10 times 10 to the 5 if it's double bonds. So if we're dealing with a one and a half bonds, 
then we're going to go with the in-between. So instead of 5 or 10, we'll go with 7.5, which is the in-between for the K value. And then for the reduced mass, we simply multiply the masses of the two elements in question, which is the carbon bound, bound to the other carbon. And the mass of carbon is 12. The mass of the other carbon is also 12. So you multiply 12 by 12 and you divide that by 12 plus 12, which if you look at this, 12 plus 12 is the same thing as saying 2 times 12. So you'll have 12 times 12 divided by 2 times 12. 12s cancel out, you end up with 12 divided by 2, which in other words is equal to 6. So divide 7.5 times 10 to the fifth by 6 and take the square root of it and multiply that value by 4.2 and you find out that the expected frequency of absorption for the aromatic carbon-carbon bonds is in fact at about 14, 1500 inverse centimeters. So this is actually really astonishing and, and great to see play out with the formula um, just via the resonance argument of what the benzene uh, ring is doing you know, to itself. All right, so that's actually fantastic. I, I personally love that, <laughs> that way of looking at it. So this formula is it's really awesome. Um, if you need to revisit how to use this formula, I recommend that you look at the first video in this lecture series, you know, revisit it so that you know how to use it. All right, so now that brings us to the bending modes, the CCH bending modes that in the different derivatives of aromatic compounds we looked at here, which are basically the methyl derivatives, right? So you have, we have one methyl derivative, we have two, which are 1,2, 1,3, 1,4 methyls separated apart in the rings. What we do see is that we have um, a sequence of peaks that show up in the finger ring, fingerprint region. Specifically, if you have a mono substitution on your benzene ring, you see two peaks, one at 729 or about 729 and another one at close to 700. If you have two substitutions, but they're right next to each other, so in the 1,2 positions, then you only see one peak at about 750. If you have a meta substitution, which is to say that you are separated um, by one carbon or you have substituents in the 1,3 positions, you have two peaks, but now this time around, the first one is higher in quantity. It's at seven, almost 770, and this one is still close to 700. That's your meta. And then the para substitution, the 1,4 positions, this only gives you one peak close to 800. And the way I kind of remember this, starting from the mono substitution, is that you have 21, 21, right? So two peaks, one peak, two peaks, one peak. So I remember this as my forever 21, right? <laughs> Uh, this is what, um, if you guys have used uh, Solomon as your textbook, uh, this is what he kind of implies. You know, you have these ranges right there. But I want to be completely honest with you. These ranges are not super uh, reliant on, on on most molecules. Like, you, you'll have some molecules that do have more substitution, ortho substitution, meta substitution that don't necessarily have these peaks. Because when you start introducing different groups like halogens, you know, hydroxyls, uh, alkyls, uh, the picture is more complicated than Solomon's makes it sound. So treat this with a grain of salt. You know, you're forever 21. It's not really all that is cracked up to be. <laughs> okay, so that completes the, the story for IR spectroscopy. So the last thing I want to leave you with is the regions, the regions in the IR spectrum that you want to be completely uh, aware of. There's basically three regions that you want to be looking at every single time. You want to always focus on the 3000 uh, line, right? If you're above it, you have a certain kind of bonds. If you're below it, you have some of the type of bonds. Specifically, if you're below 3000, you have carbon hydrogen bonds, on sp3 hybridized carbons, with the exception of aldehydes, which fall between 28 and 2600. If you're above 3000, then you have CH bonds to sp2 hybridized carbons. If you are even further than that, you are, uh, and you have sharp peaks too, you have uh, carbon hydrogen bonds to sp hybridized carbons, so all kinds, in other words. If you do have peaks at about 
2,200, you're looking at triple bonds. Those could be carbon-carbon triple bonds or carbon-nitrogen triple bonds. If you have peaks at about 16, 1,700, you're looking at double bonds. Those could be your carbon-carbon double bonds or carbon-oxygen double bonds. And then for your aromatics, you could have the bending modes that you look at. But like I said, take that with a grain of salt. It doesn't always work out for the aromatics. Um, of course, above 3000, if you have broad peaks, you could be looking at OH or NH functionalities. But these are really the usual suspects, the ones you want to go after. Do you have peaks at about 22, 2100? Triple bonds. You have peaks around 17, 1600? Double bonds. Do you have peaks above 3000? Those are the things you really want to look at. And to a lesser degree, the bending modes for aromatics. Now, this happens to be an alkyne because we do have a bond at about 2100 and uh, notice as well that we have this bond at about 33,000 so in combination with a triple bond at 21 and the sharp peak above 3000 you know and this is a 3 3300 roughly speaking so it's a little bit farther away from 3000 than your typical alkenes this is your terminal alkyne and this is the actual molecule for which the spectrum corresponds to all right so with that being said we are done with infrared spectroscopy i hope you enjoy these lectures and in the next set of lectures we are going to finally talk about the big uh, horsepower of identification molecular identification which is nmr spectroscopy so i will see you on the next lecture video bye bye